Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, in this episode, we're gonna take a look at filters for that little camera that's hanging off your drone. So you got a DJI drone, you got a Unique, you got an Autel, and you've got a camera on it, and everybody's telling you, well, you can't get any good quality video or photos unless you have a filter. But you're wondering, why do I need a filter? And what do these filters actually do? So I'm gonna discuss that in this episode. Here we go. All right, the first filter we're gonna take a look at is the UV filter. UV stands for ultraviolet, and you must hear it every morning on your morning commute or news channel because they talk about the UV index, which talks about the sunburn effect of UV light. So there's all types of UV light. Here's a less harmful type called a black light that you're probably familiar with, been around for a long time. Now, in the days of old, when we had cameras that used film, this here is a modern camera, a DSLR. But in the days of old, when we put film in cameras, well, UV light was not good for the film because it actually caused the film to turn blue or cause a haze effect in the image. So back then they had to design some sort of filter system. And that's basically the UV filter. I have one right here on this camera. And if I take it off and hold it up to this here camera, it should make no difference. There I am. The film quality or the image quality, I should say, doesn't change because the only thing it's filtering out is not the colors or anything, but just the UV light. So nowadays, you know, in the year 2018, we have these beautiful digital cameras. And um, do you really need a UV filter? Because there's no film in the camera. Well, you'll get 50% of the photographic community that will say, you definitely need a UV filter. And you'll get the other 50% that say, don't need them, waste the money, waste the time. So I'm an old school guy and I have a camera and every time I buy a lens, I put a UV filter on it because it protects the lens. You see, these lenses can cost more than your average drone. So if you scratch the glass in the front, they're kind of messed up. So you protect them by putting a UV filter on the front. It protects the lens and every now and then it will filter out UV rays. Apparently, modern digital cameras actually have a UV filter built into the image sensor. So you really don't need the front portion. And if you have a UV filter in the sensor and another one in the front, it makes no difference. It doesn't affect your image. Now let's talk about drones and UV filters. So I've got the Mavic Air here and I can screw off the front piece of glass. Well, my question is, is there a UV filter built into the sensor or is there a UV filter built into the glass that comes with the Mavic Air? So I asked DJI that question and the answer was, heck, we don't have a clue. We don't really know. Well, I'm sure the technicians who built this know, but the customer support doesn't know and I can't seem to find anywhere that this is a UV filter. As a matter of fact, if you want to replace this little piece of glass that's on the front of the Mavic Air that unscrews, well, you won't find it because DJI, if you ask them for it, they will tell you to go check with a third party. And if you check with a third party to buy this little piece of glass, you're gonna find that Freewell or Polar Pro will sell you this piece of glass, but it will be a UV filter. So that makes me think that maybe the sensor doesn't have a UV filter in it. I'm not really sure. And the reason I say that, to take my little argument here a, a step further, if you take a look at the Phantom 4 Pro, which has a one inch sensor and a real aperture, so it's pretty much a real camera doing all the basic functions that a camera would do. If you look on the DJI website, and you want to replace that glass in the front, DJI will sell it to you and they call it a UV filter. Hmm, interesting. So that means if they put a UV filter on the front, maybe the sensor doesn't have a UV filter. So maybe then these lesser quality drones don't have a UV filter, which would lead me to say then, maybe you do need a UV filter on the front for better image quality. And if you look on the Polar Pro website or the Freewell website, they will sell you a UV filter that goes over that piece of glass on the front to filter out UV rays. So if that's the case, then by using this here filter, my image should be better on a bright sunny day, right? Well, it's hard to tell. Here, watch this. Here I am, a bright sunny day. I've got my Mavic Air and on the camera, I have no filter at the moment. So I'm gonna take off and I'm gonna do some filming with no filter. I've taken that little piece of glass off. So I'm flying along. This is the image I am capturing. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna add the UV filter right here. So Freewell makes the UV filter. 
Here's a close image of it. And it's screwed on, it's on the front of the Mavic Air, and here I am flying. Do you see a difference? Do you remember the other image? Well, this one's got a UV filter on it. Looks pretty sharp, looks pretty clear, all the colors look right. Now, there is a slight difference. Here they are side by side. One of these images has no filter, and the other one has a UV filter. Try to figure out which one. There is a slight difference, and the difference is in the sky. Look at the sky, and here we go. The one on the left had the UV filter. So, what are my thoughts on UV filters? Well, to be quite honest, I don't know, because I've been using DSLR cameras for so long, and as I've mentioned earlier, 50% of the community will say, use a UV filter, and the other 50% will say, waste of money, you don't need one. Well, I've used them all the time. They do not degrade my image. As a matter of fact, they protect my lens. So, I'm not really going wrong using them and uh, I do consider them an investment and I do use a UV filter on the Mavic Air. It's just one of those things. I've been doing this for so long that that UV filter is stuck in my brain so I keep using it. It doesn't mess up the image and as you saw in the two images compared, well, they kind of look the same. As a matter of fact, they do look the same. The UV filter didn't really reduce anything that I could see and having it on didn't change the image at all. So, really. It's, it's up to you. If you want to spend the money to buy a UV filter, it may improve your image. It's definitely gonna protect your lens and you can always use it as a backup piece of glass. All right, on to the next filter. The next filter we're gonna take a look at is a polarizer or a polarized filter. And I have a large one here from a DSLR camera. And this is actually a circular polarized filter. And if you take the word circular, and polarize and put it together, you get the acronym CPL. And that is why the small little filters that you get from Freewell or Polar Pro will actually say CPL on the side because that means circular polarized filter. Now you use a polarized filter on sunny days when you can see light glare reflections. They usually bounce off of water or skin or vegetation or right after it rains. Do you ever notice right after it rains if you're flying with your drone? Everything looks terrible. You've got a haze, especially if the sun's just come up and you really can't get the image you want depending on the angle you're flying. Well, you can fix that with a polarized filter. The problem with a circular polarized filter is you've got to turn it manually and on this little Mavic Air, it's kind of hard to do. You'll see in the video footage coming up, it's pretty hard to do to try to get the right angle for what you want to film. But trial and error, you'll get it eventually and your image will come out great. Now, if you want to see quickly what a polarized filter can do, here's an example. So as I mentioned, if you're flying over, let's say the beach and it's just rain and you have water, check this out with a filter, without a filter. You can see with the filter, you see more of the sand. Same is true on vegetation. You can see it's more green. You don't have that sun reflection, which we're all used to when we fly over with our drones. Same is true with the sky. Look at the sky, more blue, deeper blues, vice, no filter, not there. Now, of course, if you don't own one of these, well, you could go into Adobe or Lightroom or something and play with the colors afterwards and try to get the same effect. And you probably could come close to it, but if you have certain reflections, it's not gonna work. You really need a polarized filter. So this is something I would definitely recommend to have in your kit bag. If you don't have any filters at all and you just had to have one, then get yourself a polarized filter because there's gonna be many days you're gonna fly on a sunny day and just at the angle the sun is, you're gonna get all those bad reflections and your image isn't gonna look that great. But you can get rid of that polarized light with this here filter. So here, here's my demo using a polarized filter from the PGY company. Check it out. Here we have the PGY Tech polarized filter and it is a circular polarized filter. And here I have it on the Mavic Air. Now here's the problem. I, I've, I've got my big fingers in the way trying to spin this so I can get Get it just right so the sky looks nice and dark blue and I'm having a bit of difficulties. But here we go. Here's with no filter. I've got the glass off the Mavic Air and here's with the polarized filter on the Mavic Air. You see I've got that a little too blue so and it's a little bit shifted to the left. But here we are flying. So the entire image has the light filtered. So what you see here is the angle of the sun is just perfect. In other words, all the colors are correct. And now I have it side by side. One of these image is polarized and the other one is just your normal Mavic Air with no filter on it. 
So one of these images, the ground is the true color and the sky is a really nice color. And look at the football field. It's a nice bright green. And look at the one with no filter, not so green. And my final thoughts on the circular polarized filter. Well, it's essential. I think everybody should have one. You don't use it all the time. Just use it when you need it. And you'll see your images are going to come out really good. Your color is going to come out more vibrant, more contrast. Everything should work really well. Now you have to remember if you're taking snapshots, it's perfect because you will adjust it for the direction you're flying and take a snapshot in that direction. However, if you use it for video and you adjust it to fly in one direction and then you turn and fly in another, you may no longer be filtering that polarized light because you adjusted it for this direction. So that's something to keep in mind. And now on to the next filter. The next filter to take a look at is the ND filter, neutral density filter. Pay attention to that word neutral because I'm going to explain it. So the word neutral and neutral density just means there's a coating over top of the lens that will not affect the color in the hue of the image you're taking. What that means is if I snap a photo with this filter on of a subject and then snap the exact same photo with the filter off, the color should look pretty much the same. It should not affect the color. It's only there to affect the actual light falling onto the sensor by removing that light or lessening the amount of light there. Now you're wondering if that's the case, why the heck would I want one of these? Well, they're very popular and they come in different shades, different darknesses uh, to meet your requirements. So if you have a camera like this, you would use a neutral density filter because you want to take pictures in the daylight, bright sunny day, and you want to play with your aperture in the camera so that you can get a depth of field. And depth of field just means objects in front are out of focus and objects behind a certain point are out of focus. Now, the other reason you would use an ND filter on a camera like this is because you want to take a photo in the day again with daylight and keep the shutter open for a longer period of time and not overexpose your photo. So if I take a photo of moving water with an ND filter on it, I can leave the shutter open for maybe a second, two seconds, up to eight seconds, and uh, the water will look very silky smooth, same as with clouds. And if I was in a city and I wanted to remove all the people off the city because I want to take a beautiful picture of the city with no people anywhere, just put an ND1000 on the front of the camera, keep your shutter open for a long time, and since people and cars are moving, they will all disappear. The only objects that will appear in your photo will be the actual objects that are not moving. So now you're saying that's pretty cool, but how does that apply to like the Mavic Air that has a tiny little camera? It's not a professional camera. So why would I use an ND filter? Well, you use an ND filter on a Mavic Air to actually help it out. You see the aperture is wide open. You can not adjust it and it's got a fixed focal length. You can not adjust it, but you can adjust the shutter speed and you can adjust the frame rate. So if you use an ND filter and maybe adjust the other two items, you can come out with a different type of image than you would get had you not used the filter. For example, the most common reason people use an ND filter is on a sunny day when the sun is right above, straight up in the air and you're flying along. If you're flying along with almost any drone and shooting with your camera forward, you will get prop flicker as the sun goes through the props, it will flicker the light onto your lens. Now, normally you wouldn't see that, but since it's so bright out, the shutter's going so fast, it will actually pick that up. So the way to fix it is to slow the shutter down. The only way to slow the shutter down is to put an ND filter over front and then you don't get that anymore. Now, the other reason to use an ND filter is to obtain motion blur and motion blur is basically you want an object to be in front of you. You have, must have the camera pointing at an object that is either stationary or moving. So if the object's stationary, then the drone must be moving at a good speed. And that means the ground will look blurry below you, but the object you're pointing at will be perfectly in focus. And now if you do the opposite and you have the subject moving and the drone is sitting still and following it, well then the subject will still be perfectly in focus. And as the subject moves like riding a horse or whatnot and the drone turns, it will actually make the ground look out of focus. And it gives you that motion blur, which is very cinematic. And the way to get motion blur on a tiny little drone like this is basically go outside, take a look at how bright it is, choose the correct ND filter for the correct darkness. It might be a little bit of trial and error. With your little drone on the ground, all you have to do is set the frame rate really low, like at 24 frames per second, and then just set the shutter speed to twice the frame rate. And uh, if everything looks good on your little phone or tablet of the image you see, go fly. Make sure you're close to the ground or close to an object so you can get that motion of things flying by. And uh, 
you'll get motion blur. Now in the following video segments, I'm going to show you an ND16, an ND64, and an ND1000. And you're saying an ND1000, well, yep, check that out. That's an ND1000 for a Phantom 4 Pro. But in the video segment you're going to see, I didn't use a Phantom 4 Pro. What did I use? Since I was doing all my video tests on a Mavic Air or a Mavic Pro, I used an ND1000 for a Mavic Air. That shouldn't exist. There should be no such thing as an ND1000 for a Mavic Air for the simple reason that putting something that dark over a lens like this, this camera does not handle low light well. So what it's designed for is more for taking photos or achieving a certain effect. Now the effect that you achieve may not be the effect you're looking for, although it is still pretty cool. So you're gonna see it in this segment, check this out. All right, this first example is using an ND16. I'm actually flying the Mavic Pro right here. So one of these images has an ND16 filter on it and the other image does not. Now I'm gonna give you a hint. Take a look at the image on the left. Do you see some flicker happening? Remember I was talking about that light flying through the props? Look at what's happening to the image on the left. That would be the image that has no filter. The image on the right is actually the N16 and it stops the flicker from happening. Now for this next example, we're gonna use an ND64 filter and this one is actually polarized as well. If you have the benefit of polarization. So what you should notice between these two images is that one looks a little smoother and has no flicker, nothing. It's a very clean, smooth image. Which one could it be? And it is the image on the left. You could probably tell that by the sky. And now we're gonna use an ND1000 filter on the Mavic Air. So they do make an ND1000 filter. Freewell makes it for the Mavic Air. Freewell also makes one for the Mavic Pro right here. And it also makes one for the Phantom 4 Pro and the Phantom 4 Advanced. This is the image from an ND1000. It doesn't look that great. It's because there's not a lot of light getting in. And if I move around in the image, I can get that blurred effect, which is pretty cool. But this is probably why people want an ND1000 because you can make instant motion blur. So look at the ground. I'm flying forward. Everything forward is fixed, but the ground looks like it's all blurry. And if I turn around, same thing. I'm going to fly back and you're going to get that same motion blur effect happening. The ground looks blurry. I'm standing at the end and I look fine. And here we have the Mavic Air stationary in the air, but I'm moving. So as the Mavic Air follows me and tries to keep me in center frame, the ground looks blurry. And that's the motion blur you get from that effect. And here we have the same thing. All right, my final thoughts on ND filters. Well, once again, they are essential. I use them on bright sunny days when the sun is directly above me because I know I'm gonna get that prop flicker in the image. So I always put on an ND8 and it seems to work. It slows down the shutter just enough. If it's super, super bright and there's no clouds, then I'll put on an ND16. It doesn't affect the quality of the image at all. It doesn't affect the colors or anything. It actually makes everything look good. Now, if you have the opportunity to buy an ND16 and you can buy one that's polarized, then obviously I would suggest get the polarized one because then you get the benefit of both worlds. You get a polarized filter to remove the polarized light. And at the same time, you're slowing down the shutter speed so that you don't get any of that prop flicker happening in your image. Now, when it comes to the ND1000, if you're making a zombie apocalypse movie, then an ND1000 for the Mavic Air is perfect. Now, I have used an ND1000 for the Phantom 4 Pro and the Phantom Advanced, and the results are much better because the camera obviously is better in low light. So you get a much better image. Now, everything I just mentioned about ND filters also applies to a GoPro Hero 5 or a GoPro Hero 6. So if you have these, go on the Freewell site and check this out because they have have ND filters, polarized filters, UV filters, everything you can imagine. They even have, if you can believe it, because I couldn't believe it till I saw it, they even have an ND1000 filter for a GoPro. That is pretty wild. So check out the Freewell site and all of these filters. Everything I just mentioned in this video will apply to the GoPro. And before I finish this video, I wanted to show you this. Even people were making ND filters. See this bubble? That's the bubble that goes on a Mavic Pro. This is actually darkened as an ND filter so that if you flew with the bubble on, well, you wouldn't have to put an ND filter because the actual plastic is coated in an ND neutral 
coloring. And I do have a video on that. I'll put the link below if you want to see exactly what the results are with something like this. And since we're on the subject of cameras and filters, let me show you this. This here is a gimbal guard for the Mavic Air made by Freewell. My guess is it is a replacement gimbal guard, but it's not the same as the gimbal guard that came with your Mavic Air. So if you break your gimbal guard, you can get another one from Freewell. I don't know if it's cheaper than the one that DJI sells, but uh, let me just show you it quickly. There it is, it's one solid piece. It looks like the hood off an old Volkswagen. I'm not really sure, and I'll show you how it goes on the camera. Here's my Mavic Air, I flip it upside down. I just bring this little gimbal guard over and it's designed to just slide in like that. There it is, it's on. So that's from Freewell. Just in case you broke yours that came with your Mavic Air, well, then you can get one from Freewell if you can't get one from DJI. So it's a one piece vice a two piece. And in case anybody asks, yes, that gimbal guard from Freewell and the one from DJI will both fit over the filters that Polar Pro or Freewell or other companies sell that go on your Mavic Air. Uh, DJI has left a little bit of space, same as that cover, so that filters can fit underneath all right, finally, here I am at the end of this video. I hope it wasn't too long, and I hope you have a better understanding of filters, at least the filters you might want to consider buying for your drone. Doesn't matter what you have. A unique product, an Autel product, a DJI product, or some other product. Somebody out there is going to make a camera filter for that product as long as it's a really good camera on the drone. Now, if you still have questions after all of that, post your questions below and I'll get back to you with an answer. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button by now, please hit the subscribe button. And while we're on the topic of subscribe buttons, please hit the like button because that helps me out here as well. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.